Hi everyone, this is Ants. Wouldn't you want to use some of these amazing um, 3D asset packs, 3D tiled asset packs from both KKIT and Kenny in your 3D game? Wouldn't you want to design a really cool 3D world with a bunch of different assets placed all over uh, uh, a world and uh, have it available in LimGDX to do your 3D game. But before I actually move forward with that thought, there's also ones from Kenny, and Kenny has some amazing cityscape stuff. He has some amazing roads, uh, and they're all tiles and modular buildings. It, it, honestly, and all this is open source, and you can use it um, even commercially and it's all there for your taking to make a great 3d game right so how do you actually get it to uh work in libgdx and more importantly how do you design this amazing world uh if you don't have an editor because libgdx doesn't have not only a 3d editor but it doesn't have a, t a 3d tile editor well you know what i thought about i thought about well why don't we just use godot's uh, grid map node and it's basically a tile editor where you actually see all the different assets on the right and you just drag and drop them wherever you want and design the world in 10 minutes uh, using Godot right and as you can see my world I'm not really an artist it's very flat but it should have been a lot more kind of dynamic ups and downs I have a little bit of a mountain here but honestly and I, I just sprinkled a few trees here and there, and that's basically it, right? So how do we get this design, this world into libgdx? Well, once I designed it in Godot, I have a really small script. It's only 10 lines of code, and it generates a JSON file. And it's, a, it's one line for every uh, tile, and there's about over 2,000 tiles here. And it has basically the transform. I'm not going to geek out on you on all the details, but you have a JSON file and then you have the assets, right? And that's basically all you need to import it into libgdx, okay? And I'm going to show you the result of it just right now. Okay, let's get started. So I have have the demo on itch.io and it's all web-based so you don't have to download anything there's no uh, threat i mean it's very easy you just need a web browser and i'll have the link in uh, the description and here it is and then once you are on my page you just click on click me and it loads up the entire grid map and there you have it now i have another video that explains all the shadows and all that kind of stuff but um, I'm not going to go through that. I'm just going to show you the proof that now you have access to kind of um, the entire uh, map and the windmills and let's go to the lumber mills and oh by the way uh, the, the, the controls are actually on the GUI so just read it so space is like the super sprinting and here is the mine, right? And uh, left mouse, wait, sorry, right, right mouse button drag takes you through uh, and rotates the camera. And there you have it, um, right? And looks pretty good and it's fast. Um, this is in 4K, right? Uh, it's locked to the VSync of the RUD browser, so my monitor is 60 hertz, but it does uh, much more than that. On 1920 by 1080, I could get close to 900 to 1000. So it's extremely tight, and the reason why I'm using chunks and I'm using optimizations on not to draw everything behind me and that sort of thing, and there's other uh, optimizations I do. So that's basically it. So let's get through kind of like um the details and if that's enough for you on the video that's fine you could actually read all about uh, uh, uh what i'm about to say uh in the description of uh the itch page and I have a bunch of other screenshots and the controls are here and why it's important it's important because libgdx doesn't have any ability to design 
3D worlds uh, using uh, asset uh, tile sets from Kenny or from KKit. So use Godot and bring it over into libgdx. And that's the reason why this, this project is important. Uh, I also built uh, a more advanced uh, shadows. Uh, I have percentage closures filtering uh, different levels. I, I could dither the shadows. Um, and I also included normal bias. That's not everything, but that's that's a lot. So how do you get rid of uh, bias? And you're not gonna see this in the demo because I've actually used this tool to get rid of the bias and set those uh, values so that you don't see shadow bias. But if you change settings, you will eventually see shadow bias, but you could actually uh, fix them by using this interface, right? And then the workflow, right? I talked about the workflow. You use you load up uh, Godot 4, you design your three le 3D level using a grid map, uh, take my custom code, generate the JSON file, take my custom code to import it into libgdx, and then build your own game library, basically. And then you profit. Um, and then I go through a bunch of features. The, the primary one is on the performance here. So on my 3050 at uh, 1920 by 1080, I'm getting 900 to 1000 FPS. It's actually very, very good. And that's with the medium settings shadows. That's actually really good. Um, and then on the web browsers on low end hardware, and that's kind of what I'm targeting. Basically, I'm trying to get like a solution that actually works on the web for low end hardware, because um, one of the things about libgdx is it's older GLES3 technology and older hardware support that. Not all ho older hardware support Vulkan, right? So this is the reason why. So on my 2017 uh, um, HP laptop with integrated graphics, I was getting 42 to 52 FPS with the uh, shadow map of 2048 by 2048. It's not a great big shadow map, but it's actually pretty good. And then on my Mac mini, that's almost 10 years old, like it's really old. Um, I was getting 23 to 30 FPS, but most likely, most of the time, 25 FPS. And that's at 1920 by 1080. It, on a smaller uh, screen, it actually does much better. And this demo, when it's all zipped up with the assets, is 5.71 uh, megabytes. It's less than six megabytes. Like it's unbelievable. I have a bunch of issues I need to resolve. Uh, it's just a demo. I didn't put too much effort into it. And the most important thing, and this is the most important part of the video is, you're saying, oh my God, this is so cool. Or maybe you say this sucks and that's good enough too. But if, if you think it's cool and you're saying, where, where, where's the GitHub repo? Where's the code? Well, it's a lot more complicated than that, right? You first of all need to install Godot. You need to know how to use Godot and you need to know how to use Godot grid map. And then you're going to need my custom project uh, that actually takes the Godot grid map and exports it to JSON. That's one repo. Then I have a custom uh, GDX GLT, uh, TF repository for advanced shadows that supports PCF, dither and a bunch of other stuff. And then you're going to need another repo that actually does the custom grid map importer to import the assets into uh, libgdx. And then you're going to need my custom game engine. That's a lot of different pieces just to get uh, a 3D game going using uh, KKit's uh, 3D assets. And my, my conclusion is if you're going to design a beautiful world in Godot using grid maps, just use Godot to make your game. Don't waste your time. And that's, that's I'm going to leave it to you. And if you say, well, uh, GD script sucks for Godot, and it does. I don't like GD script. It's actually slow most of the time. But you could use Java or Kotlin with Godot. And I have a whole video series on that, right? And I have an example video of uh, a really high-end third-person shooter game that's been converted into Kotlin working under Godot. So that's basically it. Um, so thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.